Hi kids. Time for Ramona the Pest. I hope you're ready. We're going to finish up chapter two, which was called Show and Tell. Do you remember what Ramona brought? Remember she brought her doll, Chevrolet, with the green hair? And what did Howie bring? Do you remember? Do you remember how he brought Ramona's bunny? And then Miss Binny did something really nice for the bunny, right? She gave it a ribbon. Ramona is very excited about this ribbon because she figures it's on her bunny, so it should be her ribbon, right? Howie might have something else to say about this, so we're going to find out. When the noon bell rang, Mrs. Quimby, Mrs. Kemp, and little Villa Jean were waiting by the fence. Howie, Mrs. Kemp called out, don't forget Ramona's bunny. Oh, that old thing, muttered Howie. But he returned to his cupboard while Ramona walked behind with the mothers. Howie needs to learn some responsibility, Mrs. Kemp was saying. When Howie had caught up, he untied the ribbon and shoved the rabbit at Ramona. Here, take your old rabbit, he said. Ramona took it and said, give me my ribbon. It's not your ribbon, said Howie, it's my ribbon. The two mothers were so busy talking about their children needing to learn responsibility that they paid no attention to the argument. It is not, said Ramona, it is my ribbon. Miss Binney gave it to me, said Howie. Howie was so calm and so sure that he was right that Ramona was infuriated. She grabbed for the written ribbon, but Howie held it away from her. Miss Binney tied it around my rabbit's neck, so it is my ribbon, she said. Her voice was rising. No, said Howie flatly and calmly. Ribbons are not for boys, Ramona reminded him. Now give it to me. It isn't yours. Howie showed no excitement, only stubbornness. Howie's behavior drove Ramona wild. Here's the picture. She wanted him to get excited. She wanted him to get angry. It is too mine, she shrieked. And at last, the mothers turned around. What is going on, asked Mrs. Quimby. Howie has my ribbon and he won't give it back, said Ramona. So angry, she was near tears. It isn't hers, said Howie. The two mothers exchanged glances. Howie, where did you get that ribbon, said Mrs. Kemp. Miss Binney gave it to me, said Howie. She gave it to me, corrected Ramona as she fought back tears. She tied it around my rabbit's neck, so it is my ribbon. Anybody should be able to understand that. Now, Howie, said his mother, what does a boy, big boy like you want with that old ribbon? Howie considered the question as if his mother really expected an answer. Well, I could tie it on the tail of a kite if I had a kite. He just doesn't want to give it to me, said Ramona. He's selfish. I am not selfish, said Howie. You want something that doesn't belong to you. I do not, yelled Ramona. Now, Ramona, said her mother, a piece of ribbon, ribbon isn't worth all of this fuss. We have other ribbons at home that you can have. Ramona did not know how to make her mother understand. No other ribbon could possibly take the place of this one. Miss Binney had given her this ribbon and she wanted it because she loved Miss Binney so much. She wished Miss Binney were here now because her teacher, unlike the mothers, would understand. All Ramona could say was, it's mine. I know, said Mrs. Kemp, as if a brilliant idea had come to her. You can share the ribbon. Ramona and Howie exchanged a look in which they agreed that nothing would be worse than sharing the ribbon. They both knew that there were some things that could not be shared, and Miss Binney's ribbon was one of them. Ramona wanted that ribbon, and she wanted it all to herself. She knew that a grubby boy like Howie would probably let Willa Jean drool on it and ruin it. That's a good idea, agreed Mrs. Quimby. Ramona, you let Howie carry it halfway home, and then you can carry the rest of the way. Then who gets it, asked Howie, voicing the question that had risen in Ramona's thoughts. We can cut it in two so each of you can have half, said Mrs. Kemp. We're having lunch at Ramona's house, and as soon as we get there, we can divide the ribbon. Miss Binney's beautiful ribbon chopped in two? This was too much. Ramona burst into tears. Her half would not be long enough for anything, 
If she ever got a two-wheeled bicycle, there would not be enough ribbon to weave through the spokes of a wheel. There would not even be enough to tie up Chevrolet's hair. I'm tired of sharing, said Howie. Share, share, share. That is all that grown-ups ever talk about. Ramona could not understand why both mothers were amused by Howie's words. She understood exactly what Howie meant, and she liked him a little better for saying so. She had always felt guilty feeling that she was the only person that felt that way. Now, Howie, it isn't as bad as all that, said, Mrs. said his mother. It is too, said Howie, and Ramona nodded through her tears. Give me the ribbon, said Mrs. Kemp. Maybe after lunch we'll all feel better. Reluctantly, Howie surrendered the precious ribbon and said, I suppose we're having tuna fish sandwiches again. Howie, that's not polite, said his mother. At the Quimby's house, Ramona's mother said, why don't you and Howie play with your tricycle and I will prepare lunch. Sure, Ramona, said Howie, as the two mothers boosted Willa Jean's stroller up the steps, and he and Ramona were left together whether they wanted to be or not. Ramona sat down on the steps and tried to think of a name to call Howie. Pie Face wasn't a bad name. If she used some of the names she had heard the big boys at school use, her mother would probably come out and scold her. Perhaps Little Booby Boy would work. Where's your trike, asked Howie. In the garage, answered Ramona. I don't ride it anymore now that I am in kindergarten. How come, asked Howie. I'm too big, said Ramona. Everybody on the block rides two-wheelers. Only babies ride tricycles. She made this remark because she knew Howie still rode his tricycle, and she was so angry about the ribbon that she wanted to hurt his feelings. If Howie's feelings were hurt, he did not show it. He seemed to be considering Ramona's remarks in his usual way. I could take off the wheels if I had some pliers and a screwdriver, he said. Ramona was indignant and wreck my tricycle? Howie just wanted to get her into trouble. I wouldn't wreck it, said Howie. I could take the wheels off my I take the wheels off my tricycle all the time. You can ride it on the front wheel and the back wheel, and then you have a two-wheeler. Ramona was not convinced. Come on, Ramona, coaxed Howie. I like to take wheels off tricycles. Ramona considered. If I let you take off the wheel, can I keep the ribbon? Well, I guess so. After all, Howie wasn't interested in playing with a ribbon. He was more interested in taking a tricycle apart. Ramona was doubtful about Howie's ability to turn her tricycle into a two-wheeler, but she was determined to have Miss Binney's red ribbon. She trundled her tricycle out of the garage, and then she found pliers and a screwdriver and handed them to Howie, who went to work in a business-like way. He used the screwdriver to pry off the hub, and with the pliers, he straightened the cotter pin that held the wheel in place, removed it from the axle, and pulled off the wheel. Next, he returned the cotter pin to its hole and the axle and in the axle, bent the ends once more so the axle would stay in place. There, he said with satisfaction, <clears throat> you have to learn to sort of lean to one side when you ride it. Ramona was impressed by Howie's work, and her anger began to drain away. Maybe Howie was right. She grasped her tricycle by the handlebars and mounted the seat. By leaning toward the side on which the wheel had been removed, she managed to balance herself and ride down the driveway in an uncertain and lopsided fashion. Hey, it works, she called out. And when she reached the sidewalk, she circled and pedaled back toward Howie, who stood beaming at the success of his alteration. I told you it would work, he bragged. I didn't believe you at first, confessed Ramona, who would never again be seen riding a baby's three-wheeler. The back door opened and Mrs. Quimby called out, Come on, children, your tuna sandwiches are ready. What do you think of Ramona's new bike? <laughs> Pretty cool. See my two-wheeler? cried Ramona, pedaling in a lopsided circle. Well, aren't you a big girl, exclaimed her mother. How did you manage to do that? Ramona came to a halt. Howie fixed my trike for me and told me how to ride it. What a clever boy, said Mrs. Quimby. You must be very good with tools, Howie. Howie beamed with pleasure at this compliment. And Mama, said Ramona, Howie says I can have Miss Vinnie's ribbon. Sure, agreed Howie. What do I want with an old ribbon? I'm going to weave it in and out of the front spokes of my new two-wheeler and ride so fast it makes a blur, said Ramona. Come on, Howie, let's go eat our tuna fish sandwiches. That's the end of chapter two. So things ended out pretty well for Ramona on that chapter. 
seemed like she had a better second day of school. Chapter three is called Seat Work. I wonder if Ramona's gonna like seat work. And what exactly is seat work? We'll find out soon on chapter three. See you next time. Bye for now.